بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على رسولنا وحبيبنا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين اللهم صل وسلم على سيدنا محمد اللهم صل وسلم على سيدنا محمد اللهم صل وسلم وبارك وأنعم على حبيبنا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته Welcome back everyone to another episode of the Meeting Point uh, with Sheikh Yasser Fahmi Sheikh Hussam Salihia uh, and myself, Zayd Abbasi. Uh, it's a pleasure to have everyone back with us today. Uh, Shiyukh, how are we doing today? Zayl full, alhamdulillah. 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 It's great to see your faces again. Marakallah fikum. Zakamallah khair. Sheikh Yasser has his setup a little bit more uh, filled out today. It's looking very nice, mashallah. Got exactly. like a sandal yeah. behind you, got the custom art forms, like so, top notch, mashallah. Yeah, I um, try to try to show something a little nice. Are those doors, Sheikh? Are those doors? Which ones? This? Yeah. yeah. The, on the not on the bottom, the, that those color things. The colors, the colors in the painting. Oh yeah, these are these these are um these are all actual doors from uh from Morocco. So the dress is Moroccan, the art is Moroccan. Yeah, I, I really love this. Someone gifted me this this artwork, and uh, I, I have an affinity for uh, for what they call the Iwan, like the entryways into into spaces, because uh, there was a lot of thought that went into those historically. Doors were uh, represented so many things in Islamic art and architecture, but one of the things that really, you know, moves me about doors in, uh, especially in Morocco, is that uh, it's usually modeled after the sandal of the Prophet Sallallahu and it represents that when you walk in <clears throat> to a place, your home, a store, a masjid, you're walking in underneath the feet of the Prophet Sallallahu or, you know, no, following no, no, no. the footsteps of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So that's... Yes, yeah, salam. That's uh, Allahu Akbar. The depth of meaning that really inspired me to be, have an affinity for doors at this point. <laughs> Allahu Akbar. Uh, subhanallah. Subhanallah. What, really uh, spiritual. At the beauty that can come out when people put their heart and their soul into something, even something as, as seemingly simple and unimportant as the structure of a door. Yeah. Subhanallah. Uh-huh. Which actually, you know, we can tie in uh, very easily to our topic today, the topic that I wanted to, you know, chop up with the shiuch. Um, there's been, I think, a very palpable and noticeable uh, challenge that the Muslim community has had, um, and it's definitely grown, I think, over the last couple of years. Um, and that is a, a dearth of uh, committed leadership for our even like the most central institutions, like the masjid. Um, uh, so most masajid that I know, um, either nominally or very closely, are struggling a lot of times to fill board seats with people who can really be committed to them. They're struggling quite often to find uh, like scholarly leadership. Like I, you know, I was telling Sheikh Hussam and Sheikh Yasser before we got on the official episode that I've been contacted by several communities about them, right? People thinking that maybe they're ready to leave New Jersey. Um, and go out to another part of the country, reaching out to me because they uh, don't have the relationship. <laughs> um, and it's, it's you, like, you know, this is going out publicly, right? Yeah, it's, yeah, yeah. it's, it's and, not uh, an issue. <laughs> it's not. It's known. It's, it's it's known. It's known. If it's not known, then it should be known. The, the people in the, the people in Clifton are, will will protest <laughs> violently. <laughs> Sheikh Usama thinks of leaving. <laughs> well, I, I have I have actively diverted everyone away, so <laughs> I, may have, I may have killed some opportunities for Sheikh Hassan. Um, uh, and and the th- one of the things that's very evident to me in those conversations is that every message seems to be going through the same exact type of problem. So everyone's uh, going through this like extensive interview process, trying to find, asking for recommendations, and there's really only a few possibilities out there. Um, and then every masjid that I speak to, honestly, um, uh, there seems to be uh, the people that I'm speaking to are also um, people who seem to be carrying a much larger load for an institution than they probably should be, right? So normally it's like that, that person themselves is like wearing multiple hats. So it might be like the youth director of a masjid for some reason 
has taken on like the, a lot of the the primary search for a new sheikh for the community, right? Um, or you know, one of the board members is devoting all of their time just to try. So it's obvious that the masjid is lacking enough like human resources, and this is very consistent. Um, and so it seems to be a like an epidemic in the American Muslim community where the our our all of our institutions, but especially in this case, I think I want to focus in on our masajid because they're the most central to our community, seem to be having difficulty finding like committed members, like committed workers, executives, uh, and scholarly leaders. Um, and I just want to explore that a little bit. Well, and volunteers, yeah, like um, um, and volunteers. Um, and so I just wanted to talk, I wanted to kind of chop that up a little bit today. I, I'm not sure that they all are related, like they're, they're, maybe they're not all caused by the same problem. Um, but I thought there might be some, some benefit to us just uh, kicking it around. I know you, both of you have seen quite a bit from the masjid scene that I haven't seen. Um, and I think you might have perspectives that most of the community haven't seen. Uh, and so I, I just kind of wanted to throw it back at you. And we can just start off like from, from what I just said, you know, what are your initial sort of responses or thoughts or, um, you know, what, what would be the headline response to my question, assuming you agree that there is this problem? Sheikh Hussam, I want you to start us off. Um, well, I definitely do agree that there is this problem. You know, I'm, uh, you know I, I live it and experience it uh, through working through our masajid and our Islamic institutions. I think uh, that everyone could realize and appreciate that's a struggle. I guess just like how to, you know, pin your finger on <clears throat> the cause of the struggle. Um, I think probably because, you know, most of my personal experiences and interactions are through uh, the space itself. Uh, there might be, um, you know, some bias in my perception of the cause, but I think like uh, it's a good question to ponder. Like, is it because of um, lack of commitment and quote unquote religiosity of the second generation? Um, is it because of certain, uh, you know, behavioral patterns that people find? Uh, you know, prevalent in millennials and the younger generation, the upcoming generation, or is it something because of uh, relating to like bad experiences at the space, the Islamic institutions, uh, uh, or is it because of the, um, I guess you could say the, you know, that people in general in our day and age have, uh, you know, um, taken a sort of an individualistic approach to their religious consumption through online sources, uh, you know, that they don't really feel a need for uh, being part of a communi community per se, or investing in a physical space. Uh, you know, I, you know, I think that, you know, uh, there's probably validity in saying all of these things, but, you know, I guess in my experience, that's where I'm thinking about it, you know, uh, at this point, you know, I'd love to hear what Sheikh Yasser has to say, you know, what do you think, Maulana? What do you think is the bigger yeah, cause? I, um, yeah, I, I mean, <clears throat> so I definitely agree with your um, proposition, Zaid, and that. Um, and, and I think Sheikh Osama touched upon a, a nice kind of spectrum of potential problems and issues that arise. And it's, it's you know, to me, when I, when I look at the Muslim community in, in the U.S. And, um, you know, we, we have so many masajid in this country. We actually have, you know, uh, over three and a half thousand, if not more masajid now, closer probably to 4,000 plus that, that exist. And, um, you know, what Zaid was referring to in terms of just needs and demands, um, they're exponentially high. Um, I, you know, I got reached out to a lot of my colleagues as well get reached out to all the time, just from Masajid looking for <clears throat> a semblance of leadership. And usually it's Masajid saying, message saying, hey, listen, can you come and just, you know, turn our Masjid into a community kind of thing? Like, <laughs> you know, please come, we need help. Uh, uh, we'll just give it to you and, and you can, you know, take it to the next level kind of thing. But that's, that's a, it's a more of a um, emotional idea than it is a, a practical reality. There's no such thing as a sheikh waving a magic wand and turning a masjid into some vibrant community space. Um, 
but I, I definitely think it behooves us as, as a community to think through critically why we are at the state that we're in. Um, you know, uh, and when you think of kind of the generational evolution from where perhaps people were in the 70s and 80s and what the masjid meant to them in terms of their imagination, in terms of how they thought of themselves and their children, um, you perhaps will see a lot more of a proactive investment into the masjid space because there was this real sense of urgency. Um, the future, my children, uh, Islam. You know, I remember hearing people like my father talk about um, how they couldn't imagine um, that their, their children they had real concerns or doubts about their own children marrying Muslims, you know, and, and let alone the grandchildren now, alhamdulillah, marrying Muslims, bifadlillahi um, ta'ala. But there was a real concern. So that urgency and that sense of, you know, worry uh, thrusted people into a greater commitment into the Muslim space. And I think that it also, it comes from the fact that uh, their religious imagination perhaps was more vibrant, you know, thinking proactively about how religion maybe is involved. I'm talking, I'm not, I'm just speaking about from kind of the, the act, the people in the active spaces of the Muslim community, but um, certainly as, as times progress and things become more established, the second generations perhaps are, are not as uh, intimately attached because, you know, you take the message for granted, Islam is kind of established, that sense of urgency isn't as prevalent. Um, and so the, 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 there's a, there, there the, does develop a sense of uh, apathy or a bit jaded, uh, maybe, um, yes, you know, the message is great, inshallah, I'll try to go when I can. So it's, like an, it's almost like an afterthought. It just fills a role. I go to Juma, go back to work, um, <clears throat> go to you know, Ramadan, uh, maybe for, go to, for a few nights, last 10 nights, the night of the 27th, etc. Eid. So it, it's no longer this <clears throat> um, prevalent need. So uh, I, I think that that has a lot to do with the reason why we see uh, a lack of, of real mobilized and motivated uh, individuals who are like pursuing the house of Allah to be committed to it. Um, and it's something that does require a lot of critique and thought. If I can ask, uh, Sheikh, um, so you mentioned, like you, you, you compared a little bit, so does Sheikh Hussain, between the two generations, right? So that what I would call my father's generation, our father's generation, um, and you're comparing it to kind of our generation. Yeah. Um, and you mentioned that that first generation had a, a real sense of urgency and need, right? Yeah. Um, and that, that seems to be missing from our generation. Um, I, I think we might be able to start off just by getting to talk a little bit more about what, what that, why that shift in urgency may have happened, right? So you had mentioned that like our fathers came by and I heard the same thing from my father. There was a genuine concern of like, how am I even going to pass down my religion, right? Like I'm, I'm in the sea of non-Islam. How am I going to pass down Islam in the middle of it? Um, and so there's a sense of urgency, like what, why doesn't that urgency exist as much in our generation? Would you would you posture? So uh, you know, let me ask this though before that, if you don't mind, uh, Zaid. Sure, uh, sure, sure, Zaid. Sure. Um, uh, you know that sense of urgency. Like w what I was thinking as Sheikh Yasser was talking, uh, in terms of statistics, um, I don't know if we have something about you know how many people, uh, I guess, are even in the masajid's orbit. Uh, you know, I don't know what percentage of the Muslim population. Um, in the U.S., <clears throat> you know, really, uh, um, you know, I guess really grew up even anywhere near that reality. That's what I'm wondering. I know that, you know, generally speaking, in terms of masjid attendees, uh, first generation had a noticeable uh, urgency to <clears throat> develop spaces and masajid and Islamic institutions. Uh, I wonder if that sense of urgency to begin with was something um categorical or are we just noticing this whole uh, phenomena in a small demographic of the population if you understand what i'm trying to say yeah, um, yeah. good point you know. no and, and that's I, I was i was i was trying to 
I very slightly glossed over that. I was saying like that's this is in reference to the people who the Masjid al was a part of their 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 life. But I, I mean, I definitely think there is actual data that indicates that the majority of the American Muslim landscape, um, you know, they don't the Masjid is is something that plays a very tertiary role in their lives. Um, you know, and this is I think a common development in in many societies and many minority communities, you know, how people just kind of uh, organize themselves. So you'll always have that the, uh, you know, minority of the Muslim community are the ones who are really committed to free. Like these masajid, these 3,500 plus or 4,000 masajid that were built, they were built by people who were, you know, that meant something to them proactively. Um, and it's not even to talk about good and bad people and things of that nature, yeah. we're just identifying the reality as as is. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I think we, we are, you know, kind of when we're talking about institution building, commitment to the Muslim communal space, really investing oneself and leaning into the community, we're talking about the minority of people for whom, you know, orbiting the masjid is, is a lived reality, rather than just, mm. you know, uh, you know, I'm, and Shrikh Hussam, I'm sure you bumped into many of these people who just kind of like stumble in, you know, trying to get married, method and then Someone told them they have to go get a religious marriage. So they kind of knocked on the message door and say, hey, do you guys offer religious marriages? <laughs> and, uh, and then just walk away, you know, and may Allah guide us and guide them. Yeah. Uh, but I agree with that, definitely. Yeah. Uh, but, I'd be interested to see the number. Like, I wonder if it's like, uh, like, um, like, you think it's even more than 10%? About, I, no, I don't think it's 10%. I think it's, I, I think it's less than 10%. Yeah. Uh, ISPU did that study, I believe. Yeah, that's why I recall it being something, something like six, seven percent, or eight percent of the Muslim community, something in that number range. But I don't, I don't have it exactly in my mind. So. Yeah, I can try to pull it up um, as we continue our, yeah. our conversation. Yeah, I guess like you know, maybe like uh, you know, for getting back to Zaid's uh, point, but like I think uh, for me, like uh, that's also another point of consideration. Like, how many people have actually come to this country? who have, you know, the first generation was never even part of a community. Uh, they're actually very far removed from it. I, I think I've heard many stories and actually, you know, know of a few uh, cases directly where like, um, you know, the guy's name uh, or the sister's name is, is Arab, uh, Arabic, in Arabic, but like they're like, that's like a far distant past because like their father came here in the fifties or something like that. And uh, they might not even be Muslim. Um, I, I think that there's a lot of people that are like that too, uh, <clears throat> where Aslan, even if they are Muslim, they might've grown up their whole life, like with no, you know, Sheikh Yasser, I don't know if you'd know, but uh, you said there's like 3000 plus Masajid. Uh, as far as I heard, you know, many Masajid have actually been built and established and never ever had like religious leadership whatsoever. Like uh, mm -hmm. I heard in like some of these uh, towns and cities across the States, uh, you know, <clears throat> you know, they, they've never had like an Imam or a youth yeah. director or something like that, you know, yeah. um, uh, I think that's actually probably more standard than having an imam or having a sheikh, um, because I I, agree. I think mo many masajid are open and just kind of like let's just have a place to pray and do juma and uh, do some Ramadan and things like that. But yeah, I mean, I, I so I, I think you know. <clears throat> the, the, you know, the, I think to answer Sazay's question, I. I I think the real problem lies in the fact that, um, you know, in general, um, I think rel religiosity has, to some extent, um, waned. And by that, I mean, not in the sense of, so there are people who are more jaded when it comes to Islam in general. And we can, you know, talk and think about that. But I'm talking about Islam as almost like a lived reality, something that I really invest myself into. I think there are many, many Muslims who Islam is something that they just kind of are on the side. Uh, so I, I work, I go to school, um, you know, I have a family, I'm, you know, I have busy work that keeps me consumed throughout the, the week and throughout the, the years. And then Islam is this thing that, you know, I, I, I you know, I'm just, I am on the side kind of thing. And it's not a part of my personal mission. 
Um, I'm not personally motivated to, uh, it's not as if people are evil or bad. It's not, it's not, a, it's, this is not a judgment. This is more just, uh, you know, an assessment of perhaps what may be. And so, you know, I think the result of that lack of motivation um, or, or lack of imagination, if you will, it does lead to having um, a huge absence uh, in the Muslim institutional space. Because if I if I it's not if if I if I'm not evolving in a way where part of my imagination is hold on, I need to seriously go and invest myself in the house of Allah. Like I need to be in, I need to ensure to the best of my ability, regardless of what the challenges are on the floor, because I think there are certainly challenges in the Muslim institutional space. It's a it's a young community that really hasn't figured out what governance looks like what uh, authorities look like. So, the, you know, you do see mismanagement of, of, of spaces, you see um, issues and problems, you see politics, uh, you see things that arise, fitan, that make people, you know, even further kind of disinterested. Um, and there are a percentage of people who are disinterested because they're like, I just don't want to, I don't want to deal with the nonsense. I don't want to deal with the politics. I don't want to deal with the noise. I don't want to deal with the, 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 the hachi folly. <laughs> you, know, <laughs> uh, you know so so i i think that uh, you know it's it's really exploring i think we're, we're trying to do a little bit of tasawwur now and and i think the community that's listening maybe perhaps can 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 chime in as well and share where they see um you know to be why it is that mm -hmm. You know, we're, 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 we're you know, because I, I, listen, at the end of the day, all Muslims would love to see strong Muslim institutions. You know, um, you go to you go to other communities, for example, yeah. and um, you see a vibrant, um, for example, synagogue and a strong political network and, uh, you know, very powerful philanthropic uh, arms and you see the influence, the power, forget about, I'm not, you know, people, I'm, I'm not comparing exactly in the exact terms, forget about religiosity and commitment to religion or whatever, but I think Muslims would love to see vibrant, strong Muslim institutions. Yeah. No, no Muslim, no matter how near or far is going to say, I don't care whether we have a strong masjid. No, I think everyone would love to see a strong masjid, a strong um, social entity, a strong community center, yeah. things that really impact the welfare of others. I think all Muslims would love to see that their children uh, are upholding really good, nourishing Islamic values. So it's a question about exploring why it is that, you know, at this moment, the American Muslim institution, the masjid and other organizations, they just don't play that role in my mind that yeah. I should be there trying to figure out how to make sure that space is that space succeeds right and i think this is what we're trying to explore collectively right so now. if i can if i can i'm going to go back to something that was said earlier like a chef so chef Osama made a, a very interesting point that you know what percentage of that first generation even was actively involved like maybe the percentages have relative maybe the percentages haven't actually moved that much um what I would say, though, as I was like like thinking through that in my mind, even those. So what Yasser, what Sheikh Yasser just said, I think, was where I, where my initial thought went, which was that there are plenty of people that I know who were not say as active as Sheikh Yasser's father or my father, but there was a genuine benefit that they saw in the masjid and they took part in it. Like they weren't maybe active, but they were there and they benefited from it and so on, which is great. Um, but the, the next point I would bring up is that the, like the, the Meshid community has grown just in sheer numbers, right? So like maybe there was only tens of people at the time that the first generation was establishing, the first immigrant generation, when I, we're obviously all from that community, we're not talking about, um, we're not really factoring in the more indigenous uh, po po populations of Muslims into this conversation. But when these masajids were, uh, were being established, the community might have been like a few dozen people. It's now like regularly a lot of these masajid that Jum'ah have hundreds, many of them have thousands of attendees every Jum'ah. So if the percentages stayed the same, you would like logically conclude, well, there must be 
because just the sheer numbers getting larger and larger, there should be enough people to at least give some energy to the masjid. Yeah, but like maybe only 10% of the community is coming, but that 10% is still significantly bigger than it was, you know, 20, 30 years ago. So yeah. why aren't we seeing that percentage sort of translate out? Um, is is what I like where my mind went when you said that. Like, we, like there should still be something. Yeah. Another question, it sounds like Sheikh Sam has something to say, but I do want to, you know, maybe pose a slightly different question that maybe we'll have to come back to. Um, like all three of us, uh, you two, Mashaikh, way more than me, but all three of us play a role in communicating religious messages to communities here in, in the United States and mostly on the north, uh, in the Northeast. Um, and I wonder if maybe we also need to do some self reflection on the messaging we've been given. Like, have we not been inspiring people enough to have that creativity that Sheikh Yasser is referencing? All right. Uh, like, like I can tell you on my initial reflection on this, while I personally believe very strongly in like giving yourself, like volunteering your time and your energy, a lot of my messaging on the mimbar or in the Rus hasn't been about that. Um, it's been far more about like rectifying internal spirituality um, and like character issues, because I feel like that's where the main crisis of the community is. And maybe there's a need for us to adjust some of our messaging. Uh, like if, if the community as a whole is failing to have that creativity, we might have to do some introspection. Or, well, maybe some of our messaging needs to be adjusted a little bit to start to push the mess, you know, the community down that road. Yeah, uh, subhanAllah, and, uh, you bring some really important points, uh, says Zaid. Uh, I think one of the things that I'm really liking about this discussion is it's, uh, you know, it's just, it seems like it's just so multifaceted, deep, intricate. It's not a, um, it's, you know, it's one of those things that you, you need to really think deep and hard about, you know, like, uh, you know, another thing, and you know, I'd add to that is, um, like, uh, you know, uh, I think we've noticed this with many issues, but we really can't separate this issue from the general trends in society that are also influencing Muslims. Um, you know, um, I think in general, there is like a general withdrawal from uh, human interaction in the lives of people. Uh, there's a much more individualistic approach towards the way uh, time is spent, you know, you find this even among family, you know, like, so, you know, a lot of this could be traced back to some of those traditional values, the importance of family, importance of community, uh, uh, you know, and I think that those understandings uh, are also, uh, you know, waning in the minds of people. That's why you find people in the, even the same space, but they're just so, so withdrawn from actually interacting with each other. You'll find that family time starts looking like, everyone sitting in a room, but on their own particular gadget, doing their own thing. Um, and I think that's not a reality for only a few people. I think that's, you know, very like uh, predominant. I'm not sure if just, you know, it's definitely a point to be honest, you know, because I guess like what I understood from both of you, uh, you know, um, convincing people uh, of how important and needed it is to, I guess, like, you know, work with others to build something, uh, you know, is, is very, very challenging. Um, you know, actually it's like an uphill battle. Uh, so it's so much easier to just like drop everything and turn your back and just sort of withdraw into your own little corner. Um, because there's just like so much difficulty involved with the other thing. Um, you know, um, I think religious, you know, basically what I'm trying to say is, mm. Uh, to convince people now to come to a space, you really need to make a good case and uh, you need to really, really excite them. Um, they're, they're not like driven to that by default. Uh, uh, you know, it needs to be something, you know, I guess that's really out of the ordinary uh, or something that they experience or something that it goes back to their terbiyah, like the, the values that they've been raised on, um, you know. Well, you reminded me. Uh, it's a very good point, Sheikh Sam. You reminded me of a conversation I had with Sheikh Muhammad Musa from uh, North Hudson Islamic Educational Center a few years ago, where he was talking about he's talking about youth work in specific. But he was talking to one of his children. And he told them like, uh, "Yalla, in the masjid, 
and uh, the child told him like, "What's at the masjid? Like, what like what event is happening? Like, what program am I going to?" And <laughs> the sheikh told him, "Salah. Like, we're going to salat." <laughs> um, so it's uh, there, there's definitely I, like I think it encapsulated exactly what you're trying to say. Like, there's like this sense that like, well, if the masjid wants me, it needs to do more for me. Uh, it needs to figure out something to to pull me in. Like I've definitely had this conversation with with people in our generation, where they'll say, "Well, you know, even religious like thought or religious learning, I, I get online. Like, why exactly do I need to go to my local masjid to get it?" And and the 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 while that may be true, and maybe that's a part of the solution to the whole like dearth of scholarship that we have, but uh, what cannot be um, replaced is that like just the strength that community brings you and the, really the richness of life that community can bring you. Um, you know, Sheikh Yasser mentioned something very practical at the top of this conversation um, that I think is un- really overlooked, right, for parents. Like I know my parents were concerned, like where are we going to find potential matches for our children if there's no community with a shared value system? Right, so our ch- even if we raise our children right, where are they going to find spouses to have a full, complete life in the future? If we don't have a community of shared values that we know and we've invested and we know the families and we can, we can then be sure that they're going to a good family. Um, I don't know that people yeah. take that into account much these days. Yeah, well, not just that, you know, you know uh, but like I think, I think people are going to realize that a lot of the mental health struggles, the epidemic, the mental health struggle, uh, uh, mental health epidemic that we're dealing with is really going back to these things that, you know, these change, the, this massive change in lifestyle that people have uh, is going, you know, I need human interaction. It does something to my soul. Um, you know, for, forget about how am I going to raise my children and all the rest, you know. Uh, you know, what happens to me as a person emotionally and mentally when I completely isolate from other good human beings, when I don't have a support system, that's something you'll never find online uh, in an effective, in an effective setting. I mean, I, I think you mentioned a lot, Alikum, you're both mentioning a lot of very critical points that <clears throat> I hope everyone is, is listening to. And, you know, I, when I came back from Umrah, just two weeks ago, I gave a khutbah ICPC Patterson. Um, so I think it was like not not this last Juma, the Juma before it. And um, you know, I spoke about the, the the spiritual imperative of community and how one of the things that was really missing when I was in Mecca, Medina, were the people. Um, just the the, <laughs> the messiness of people, the aggression of people, the the just being nestled and and sandwiched in amongst uh, all these Muslims from across the world who are trying to like get into the rauda or touch the you, black stone. You, were, you you missed getting elbowed by those older Turkish women. I missed getting elbowed, <laughs> man. I was. It was it was missing. I I didn't the the idea the the, 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 the feeling of just scrolling around the Kaaba. It wasn't the same. Like usually, when you're doing tawaf, it's like you know, it's jihad. <laughs> you know, you're just trying to get around. This time, I was just strolling around like I was strolling in the park. I mean, I'm not joking. It was that easy to make tawaf. Um, and so, uh, missing the, the people missing what what was something that actually it you know you would assume because a lot of people listening may say, oh no no no. I w- oh that must have been amazing. People are telling me oh, it must have been amazing not to have people there or something. <laughs> there were some nice things about that, but in all honesty, because we're so spiritually and emotionally fragile beings, and as Sheikh Osama just indicated, the the, the 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 ties between you know a lot of mental health and uh, wellness and, and the decline because of hyper individualization, hyper isolation. Um, we we really do need one another. And there is so much evident virtue in being in the company of other people, and especially the company of those who have, um, you know, values and, and morals that are in line with what is pleasing to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you know, who aspire to pray and follow the Quran and the Sunnah and be in the footsteps of the Prophet We really do need the company of those, uh, of those people. And um, you know, بفضل if you think like a community of like northern New Jersey, you, you you know you can throw a rock and bump in you know and 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 have it hit a Muslim. 
uh, you know, it's one of the blessings of being in a mm-hmm. community like Northern New Jersey and Central Jersey. And even like, it's, it's really like, you, you know, you drive up to a random Dunkin' Donuts, you drive up to a random gas station, <laughs> the likelihood of bumping into a Muslim is very real, you know, who's, who's going to be there as your attendant or, you know, you, endless shops and spaces. Hijab is, I mean, I remember even growing up um, that seeing a hijab, a, you know, a woman in hijab was like, oh my God, who is that? You know, <laughs> you know, there's some woman in hijab. It must be our relative. <laughs> you know, <laughs> some woman that must be. We must know her. Uh, now, seeing a hijab is 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 so common, mashallah. Once again, I'm for those who are listening. I'm talking to the context of northern New Jersey, right? Mm-hmm. Um, and so that you know, that blessing of having the real potential of being connected to other Muslims is something that I feel um, we are, uh, you know, seriously, we'll be remiss if we don't capitalize on because that's where so much barakah descends. And this is what I was saying in the khutbah, that the real support of Allah, yadullahi ma'al jama'ah, the aid and the support of Allah is with the group. Hold on to the rope of Allah and don't be disconnected. And so many other ayat and ahadith that indicate the significance of being with Muslims and finding yourself in the company of Muslimin. And so therefore, you know, when you have a focal point like the masjid, um, like the house of Allah, like Islamic institutions, then that should be a space and a place that has to become a part of my imagination, has to become a, a, a part of the, the my landscape of consideration. So if I'm thinking about the scope of my week, the the masjid has to be a part of that. Now, some people listening, like, well, listen, I don't like really, really going to my masjid because of the people who are there or the circumstances or, you know, the thing is this, <clears throat> First off, it's the house of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, regardless of the people who are there. But secondly, when you go to the house of Allah, um, you will find a type of spiritual nourishment and a theological connection that you can't find anywhere else. And 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 furthermore, the Prophet ﷺ says, المؤمن الذي يخالط الناس ويصبر على أذاهم خير من المؤمن الذي لم يخالط الناس ولم يصبر على أذاهم The believer who, who goes and spends time with people and, and, and interacts with people and is patient with their harm is better than the believer who does not interact with people and is not patient with their harm. So the Prophet ﷺ is indicating that, as Sheikh Osama emphasized this, that it's painful to deal with people. It's not always an easy thing, right? You, you know, but... But regardless, just like it's painful to get elbowed by those people in, in Rauta, <laughs> as Zayd was talking about, like it is, it's not, but there's, there, even regardless if you're getting paid, you know, elbowed or you're getting stomped on, um, you're still getting the nourishment of being in the company of, of, of Muslimin who are, who are in surrender, who are bowing to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, even if their akhlaq are not 100%, um, even if their character traits aren't 100%, even if you know, maybe things are, are not being handled or managed the way that you would prefer or want to see. But if every single Muslim decides to say, what's the point of going to the masjid, you know, and just writing it off, people say, oh, a bunch of hypocrites. There's people who say that, you know, <laughs> all these Muslims who go to the masjid, hypocrites, <laughs> all these shiuch hypocrites, <laughs> you know, <laughs> I mean, I've heard this, by the way, I've literally heard all these sheikh, all they care about is money. I'm like, yeah, that's why they got the sheikh business, you know, mm. because of the money. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that's why all these sheikh are running to become a sheikh, because the money is thrown at them. Um, that's that's called sarcasm for those of you who are watching. But you know, the the <laughs> the, the point is that you know, I can I can each of us can can set up shop and identify problems and say. Yeah how problematic it is over there and what the problems there are and why they don't go and justify for themselves a reason not to be connected to the masjid. I'll, I've heard people say, oh, I'll never take my kids to the masjid. You know, why? I don't want them to be exposed to such you know, environments that, that, are, think, that don't carry the values that I want to see in my children. I think that is such a questionable and dangerous precedent. It's not to say 
that I'm denying the fact that people may have real identifiable grievances that are, yeah. that, are that, that need to be recognized. Yeah. But it's also to understand that this community of ours is only going to be as strong as we collectively make it. There's no magic wand. We don't have Omar ibn Abdul Aziz sitting in the masjid, you know, uh, you know, rallying the, the, the troops of the Muslim community to, hey, build this thing. No, board members are all lay people, you know, all lay people. By lay people, I just mean people in the community who happen to have become board members. They're not skilled um uh, you know uh individuals who have the capacity who who know exactly what nonprofit governance means who know exactly what it means to to, to run a masjid and that 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 needs to be that need, also needs to evolve like our governance structures in the masjid need to evolve um and like just like many other components need to evolve but that's only gonna happen when 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 we as muslims decide to make the american muslim masjid my individual project like i am invested in that that's something that i'm going to lean into not yeah. just kind of leave it up to chance say like oh i don't want to interact with those people and i've you know i've been here for 30 years and 40 years and i'll tell you and xyz and the same people are doing the same things and and we all have our stories and narratives about why we have walked away you know why i don't listen um, and and some of it, once again, may be justified, may, and perhaps some of it is not justified. Um, but these are the these are, I think, the proactive questions yeah. that we have to challenge ourselves with. Sheikh Yasser, you know, I really like that word that you used, invest. Um, and I, I really think that anything, and I don't want to like piggy bank on that. Uh, um, you know, I think anything worthwhile in life requires an investment, and I think that we realize that. Uh, for certain things, like in terms of my education and my uh, work and career and all the rest. But sometimes that realization is not had when it comes to spirituality, when it comes to community, when it comes to family, uh, like just going back on uh, to speak about that point about, um, you know, the difficulties that arise and the complications that arise when you're dealing with human beings. Uh, that actually is what builds character. You know, I, I shared this uh, recently in, you know, one of the community hubs at the Met um, um, you know, uh, it, it's so easy to just walk away from family just because you feel that things become complex and difficult and burdensome. You know, it's so easy to give up on something. Uh, but if you really invest in it, um, then you'll find that the difficulties and the ease both really build you up, you know, so that attitude like i i've heard something similar you know like for example people have criticisms that the message is always after money and so they make a fatal decision you know i'm not going to put my children in any uh, uh any of the classes or the schools in the masjid or in any masjid uh, uh because they charge money and the masjid always wants money and so on and so forth and the guy uh, goes spends uh triple or quadruple the amount on something that's totally unnecessary a luxury and it's very sad and unfortunate uh, the grievance is real i understand it but you know um what happens when i just easily give up on on those difficult relationships uh, that sometimes might uh for some people might be through their local masjid uh, i think that's one point to think. the other thing you know i just want to add to that is um uh, you know, when you come to the message space, it puts you in position uh, to uh, be positively influenced on one end and, you know, to really change someone's life on the other. Uh, I can't, you know, I'm sure every one of us uh, uh, can, you know, find certain stories in their life, you know, that they'll just never forget. Like, I, I know a few, like, um, uh, you know, someone very dear to me, uh, like a very dear mentor, a certain scene when he was talking about, and I shared this, uh, you know, with, uh, with the community at the community hub. And, and I was like, I'll never, for, I'll never forget the time uh, that, uh, you know, uh, someone told me that, you know, and their mother had passed away. And he, and he said, um, I, whenever I remember my mother, I remember all those situations where, you know, I caused her pain and hurt and, I just feel a deep sense of sorrow that I can never really change that. You know, just, just that scene, was, I remember I was driving with him in the car and I'll, I'll never forget it. You know, it, you know, when you're around good people, uh, you know, really puts you in a position to, you know, really grow as a person. Uh, other thing, I, you know, I get people and it's not because of who I am. It just happens to be because of the position I fill. 
um, uh, I, I get people sometimes that come up to me and, you know, they'll say, oh, yeah, you gave a khutbah a, a year ago about a certain topic that completely changed my life. And I'll never forget what you said. I was like, oh, really? Well, I, I don't even know who he is or what I spoke about. I have no idea. Or he'll come and tell me, uh, I remember you did uh, my kitab uh, two years ago and now I have two, two kids or something like that. And I'll be like, I, I don't even remember the brother. Uh, but subhanAllah, it, you know, when you're around people and you just engage and interact, it, you don't know what you'll do to change a person's life. Um, I think that's the other point to consider, you know. Yeah, I also think there's a, um, you know, what, I'm, what I want to say right now has like a dangerous edge to it. <laughs> so I want to, like dull it out a little bit. Always, always, dangerous. always, always. Oh, oh, yeah, sure. Um, <laughs> so I, I, I think, you know, one of the things as I, you know, you know, we started this conversation by kind of comparing the two generations. You know, one thing that I like when I when I look at uh, people like Amu Fikri and and Amu Farid and you know my father and, and you know people who have been who are there at the start of a lot of these masajid that we now take for granted in a lot of ways. Maybe the whole community wasn't engaged, but there was a critical mass that just decided that, like, maybe we're not the right person for the job, but right now I want to do it. Like, I, I feel like this is necessary. I'm going to do it. And if someone better comes along, great. And I think there's a level of that that's needed uh, from our generation, which is like, oh, right, you know what? Maybe there are problems. Fine. Like, you can come into the space and do some work. And if the, the structures of the institution are really that suffocating that you can't even do work, you know, Sheikh Yasser said this in our like sort of pre-recording conversation, you know, we would see if people were still dedicated, we would see all sorts of other activity happening that maybe is not directly a part of the masjid, but is sort of like hovering around the masjid, right? Like no one can stop you as a masjid member, like, you know what, I want to do a youth group because I have a few kids and I want to do a youth group. Like, I have a few sons or daughters, I want to do a youth group for them and their friends and anybody else who wants to come. Even if you know, like the masjid institution is so suffocating, you're going to do it without their approval and going through that structure, it can still be a communal thing that's sort of centered around the masjid. No one can really stop you from doing that. You would see a lot more of that happening if we at least had that critical mass of people who felt like, you know, I, I, need, to do, I need to do this in Allah. Maybe I'm not the right person, maybe I'm not the best person, and hopefully Allah will bring somebody else who's better along. But right now, it's not happening. I'd rather see it happen than not happen, and I'm going to do my best. Um, and I do believe that Allah puts a lot of barakah in that type of activity. Like, Allah moves, can move the community really, really far, uh, much farther than it could possibly go by every equation, just because of that, like, sincerity and that desire uh, from a critical mass of people. So having, like, legitimate criticisms of the existing people who are involved with the masajid shouldn't stop someone from recognizing that I need to get involved as well. Um, and I do also want to say, I think people have to, um, I, I think you have to genuinely check your own thoughts if like you're writing off people because of an issue. So like, you know, person X at the masjid, uh, I don't like that he or she does what, you know, A, B or C thing. And so I'm writing them off completely as just being like, I can't work with them. I, you know, some of that's probably more about you than about the person. Like if you haven't actually engaged, like actually engaged, uh, then I'm not sure that you're in a position to genuinely critique, right? Like it's, it's very easy to sort of sit back and armchair criticize. And quite often those criticisms are not valid. Like they're not, they're not actually accurate because you're just missing so much of the picture because you're not actually involved. Um, and so I think, like, even if there are legitimate issues with the existing institution, people have to sort of push back that and just say, push past that and recognize that I just need to do what I, like, I'm going to do what I can and then see, you know, where Allah takes it at the end of the day, inshallah. Now, the dangerous side to that is, you know, if everybody comes in, like, one, one problem we've had historically um, in, like, group settings or group work settings is you have way too many people trying to be the person. Um, and if it morphs into that, it just becomes, you know, meaningless and, and not uh, productive. So you just got to be careful about your ego, but that in mind, go forth, inshallah. I think, and I, and I think that is, you know, the, the question of your spiritual disposition is such an integral question, because at the end of the day, in many ways, what we're talking about here is talking about existentially, who am I? Like if we put this in Ukhrawi kind of context, when I stand in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, 
what am I going to say to Allah about who I was in this dunya? Um, you know, you have stories from the Sahaba where, you know, people were just were so passionate about committing themselves to the cause of the Prophet ﷺ. You see the little kids literally trying to make themselves taller so that they could, you know, go out into the battlefield with the Prophet ﷺ. Mm. Um, you know, that was a part of the culture. The culture was, let's commit ourselves to this cause that was far bigger than our individual selves. It wasn't about ego. You know, it was about giving themselves, giving their resources. You would have uh, Sahaba of means giving everything they had, you know, giving caravans that spanned from, you know, from Medina to, to Syria uh, as, a, as, a, as, a, as, a, as resources designated to the cause of the community. A brother needs to be freed from, from bondage. You know, everyone come and put your, pull your resources. Um, the people who did not have means were, were there present equally giving and donating and, and, and as from whatever they had, you know, so if all they had was time and energy and, and body, then that's what they would do. There were companions, uh, a companion by the name of Sayyidina Zaid, who said in one of the, the, the <laughs> in one of the battles, he said, I'm going to give us charity, my ird, my own dignity and honor. So that if anyone curses our community, then let that curse fall on me. You know, that, that's, that's, that's saying it, this is something that far exceeds the sense of self. And, and, and I think both uh, Sheikh Usama indicated this and it says they just reference this again. The, 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 the fact that if my, if my self, if my individual self is, um, is so integral to any process, then the high, there's a high likelihood that success is minimal. Like, and by success, I mean real um, uh, existential success, the, the success that's rooted in what pleases Allah, what, uh, what, what, what is of greatest welfare to the Muslim community. Like if everything is about how I feel, what I think, what's convenient for me, Am I given a position of leadership? I, I can't tell you. I mean, I don't want to go down this path of negativity because there's a lot of, I think there's also, before I go down that path of negativity, there's a lot of positive beauty in the Muslim community as mm -hmm. is. I mean, I'm sorry, yeah. you can still find, not you can still, as if I'm acting as like it's a rare commodity, you can find plenty of very beautiful people in the Muslim space. I mean, I if you go to any masjid today, you will find objectively beautiful people there, sitting there, reading the Quran, worshiping, praying, trying to connect to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And you can find them old and you can find them young. You know, and so I, I think we also have to be careful not to rush to conclusions about how dire the problem is, just because, you know, I think Muslims have also internalized this sense of real defeat and failure. And so everything feels like a fail you know, because the ummah is failing and nations are failing and nothing is going our way and hatta our masajid and we're never unified in Ramadan, we can't even get it right and blah, blah, blah. And we go down this really toxic, negative speech and self-talk that just makes it where it's so saudawi, so dark and the, the reality is so pessimistic that, you know, what's the point of even trying it? Right? Right? Um, Sheikh Hussam will translate. <laughs> it's going to uh, 60 uh, dahiyas. Fatahallah <laughs> alaikum. I love that. You know. yeah, no, 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 no. Go, no. Go, 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 go. no, no, no. I want to comment on uh, you know, that, that attitude. You know, to be honest with you, that, that attitude needs to really be picked apart, man. Uh, yani that this, this whole just pessimistic attitude towards the conflicts that arise from the complexity of relationships. Uh, uh, it, it's always been like that. Human beings are complex beings. Uh, you know, uh, everyone has their own set of emotions and their personality and their experiences. And you know what? They have either uh, a beautiful soul, like you're talking about, like how you'll find that, and you, or they might have a toxic soul, the toxic presence. Uh, you know, uh, th th that's the reality, even during the time of the Prophet, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. 
you know, uh, faith needs to be cultivated in a group. Uh, that's what we learned from our dean. Uh, when my life is lived all alone, it's a, it's a very, very, uh, uh, you know, it, you know, it's, it's a very depressing feeling on one end, but also, you know, it actually leads to so much hardship and heartache and pain that could be easily averted if there was a good support system around or if there was good influence in the person's life. Um, you know, when you look at the Prophet, so sends, like, let's let you, since you mentioned an example from uh, his life and the community of believers, uh, you know, it's, it's no doubt we always say it, you know, when, when when the prophet was in Mecca, he spent most of his life uh, in terms of uh, uh, spreading the message in Mecca, 13 years, uh, in Medina, 10 years. You compare the numbers from a few dozen to several thousand exponential growth. Um, you know, the dynamics of Medina are far different than the dynamics of Mecca in terms of the Muslim community. Um, when, when you look at that, you see, all right, yeah, it makes sense because they're all companions and they're all beautiful human beings. But actually, no, that's not the case. Yes, the companions were beautiful, but the, com the community dynamic was very complex. You had, uh, you know, friction arise between the Aus and the Khazraj, two Medinan tribes. You had to deal with uh, uh, treach treacherous tribes from uh, uh, the, the people of Medina who betrayed the Prophet Sallallahu and different scenarios and, and, and uh, they worked towards his demise. You had to deal with the movement of hypocrisy and they, they wanted to set up, uh, you know, uh, another masjid that competes with the masjid of the Prophet Sallallahu and plots against the Prophet and the companions and Masjid Lirad. You had to deal with a group of people, you know, that, you know, that even at the most difficult times uh you know so sometimes it was coming from hypocrisy sometimes it was even coming from just you know believers uh dealing with situations um you know you know with their personalities some you know not all the companions were uh you know uh you know uh were like completely in sync not even Abu Bakr and Umar sometimes you know the khilaf between Abu Bakr and Umar and Surat al-Hujurat when they started raising their voices over each other radiyallahu anhum when the hadith says kad al khayran an yahlaka the two beautiful the two good ones nearly ruined themselves. There was that complexity where like uh, they began raising their voices at each other in the presence of the prophet due to a, you know, a minor difference over who should be appointed as uh, the leader of uh, Banu Tamim, uh, you know, who should be sent back to teach them. I, I just wanted to add that there, you know, like uh, uh, if you want to look at everything ugly, uh, you're going to see ugliness in your eyes. And that's usually coming because of, you know, an ugly internal state. Uh, wallahu alam. But you know, I, I, Jack, mm -hmm. like, I'm, I'm, like, I'm, 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 no, go ahead, Shafi. Yeah. No, I was just going to say that, you know, I think I also want people to understand that none of our um, discourse negates the fact that there are problems, that there may be a problematic person that is doing things that are harmful and that needs to be addressed. There needs to be accountability structures there needs to be due process so that if someone you know is doing something and it's it's really harming um the community or harming you know the ability of growth then that person needs to be addressed accordingly so it, but i think a lot of what we're referring to is indicating that problems should not make us averse to getting involved if, for example if i have a problem child that doesn't that's not a licensure for me to just check out and say you know what, he's a problem, she's a problem, I'm just going to move on. Um, we don't do that because it's my child. Um, <laughs> you know, I sit there being invested, um, mulling over, thinking, consulting, leaning in further, um, trying to connect better, do whatever I can to, to help my child along on their journey of, of life. Um, the masjid is such an integral part of our theology and our spirituality in the sight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala far more than it is just a place of communal gathering like it is the house of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala at the end of the day it has a spiritual and theological significance that's undeniable no matter at the level of functionality or dysfunctionality in that space and 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 so we want to on the one end be as inspired as possible from all these considerations to say, you know what, I, I don't have a choice but to figure out how to be involved 
in the house of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, while simultaneously realizing and recognizing that it's only when so many more of us get involved and invested and really lean in that the, that the problems on the ground will shift and change. The negative thing that I was going to say earlier that I didn't say, I'll say it now because it has some relevance in this space. I can't tell you how often I have heard this line being in different organizations or masajid. There's a problematic person, you know, who's doing things that are, you know, just not 100% right. This person is very nafsani, full of their ego, constantly want to make sure that they are asserted and they're the leader or uh, they have a post of, of, of uh, honor and recognition. Um, and so people say, uh, you know, we, we just, I understand, we know that he's not the best and that his character is X and he's full of his nefs and whatever, but we don't have anyone else. So we can't really, <laughs> you know, we can't touch him, right? And, and Or because he's so invested, like if he doesn't come and do this, then who's going to do it? I've heard that so often that, that you know, and, and that's such a problematic thing to be said or to be, or, or to be, uh, um, to be as a reality is very problematic that, that someone who's identifiably, you know, problematic um, is not being addressed because we don't have an alternative to this person. We don't know what we would do. Um, or the, 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 the challenge of removing a problematic person is so great because of the influence they wield. They may cause fitna, you know, they'll go out and say all sorts of things and whatever the case is. I'm just indicating this to say one thing. If our institutions had real critical mass of good-hearted, sincere, humble people at the core, not in, none of us are perfect, but but they, they really work on not allowing their nefs to overtake themselves, then guess what? Being able to resolve these problems because fun, becomes far more accessible. You know, I have seen Masajid where there is a good critical mass of people at their core that have weathered many challenging storms. I have seen Masajid that have very few people at their core where one person can come and manipulate the whole space mm-hmm. and make it his own and, mm-hmm. and, and, and literally derail the community and harm so much. No. So, you know, I, you know, I hope that we, what we can glean from this is that as a, as a, as a spiritual and theological imperative, as individuals who are going to stand in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we have to figure out what our thought process needs to be to be more invested in the house of Allah. I think that's just, it's a spiritual imperative. We, and it's not about having an authoritative position. It's not as if, okay, I'm ready to go. Bismillah, I show up. Where's my post? <laughs> you know, give me the finances. Give me the imam. Give me the adhan. Give me something because now I'm here. No, no, it's about, it's actually, first and foremost, it's about showing up. It's about being present. It's about coming to the community hub with Sheikh Usama. It's about coming to uh, the halaqat and the gatherings and being present and the listening. Salawat. Coming to the salah, yes, barakallahu feekum, coming to the actual prayers, <laughs> you know. Um, and, and, then, and then as you're there, you're learning, you're observing, you're absorbing, and then you're assessing, where can I be of help? You're asking that question, and you're also assessing for yourself, how can I ensure to the best of my ability with as much humility as possible that I can make this space by the grace of Allah a better place. Not because the masjid needs me, but because I need the house of Allah, right? The deen of Allah does not need me or you. We need it. We need to be in these spaces for our salvation, for our spirituality, for our emotional wellness, for our social wellness, for the sake of our children's wellness, a space where they grow up, they're connected, they they don't imagine themselves outside of the scope of the Muslim space, you know, that the masjid is imprinted in their hearts, Muslims are imprinted in their hearts, and, and that I am purposefully, cre- you know, uh, forcing that willfully as being a part of my life, not living in the, in the peripheries and my children kind of existing in the peripheries and then, uh, you know, it, it, exploring or imagining 20, 30, 40 years from now, how come the this religious identity of my family has waned? Like I look at my children, I look at my, 
you know, and, and by the way, this is already happening. I'll go to Muslim gatherings and people will say, I mean, you know, look at my children's spouses, you know, uh, you know, many of them have chosen to marry non-Muslims and my grandchildren, their Islam is barely identifiable. And that's something that, that's a real um, concern. That's an identifiable concern because it's a question of theology and spirituality and connection to Allah's Ubudi. It's a, it's a question of existence, not just about my critiques uh, of the, 20, the 21st century masjid and the challenges of governance and, you know, whatever the case may be. You know, I, I know we're about to wrap up. Um, as as that whole last part of the conversation played out, one one scene from the Sira that kept coming back to mind that I think hits on a lot of these points altogether um, was a scene in in the preparation for the Battle of Tabuk um, that Allah comments on in the Quran, where some of the Sahaba were like you know, many of us know the story of Uthman al Dilan who giving and giving and giving and giving. But what Allah comments on in the Quran is that those Sahaba who came forward, who didn't have enough to go themselves, like they couldn't give sadaqah for the army to be helped. They couldn't even support themselves in going. So they would come to the Prophet him hoping that he can give them something, and he didn't have enough to give them, and so they would go back weeping. And the hypocrites around them were mocking them, right? Like what these people came with like this small thing or that small thing, they can't do anything. So there's like, in that one scene, you have people putting other people down, you have negative components there, you have like toxic personalities, and you still found this beauty coming out of Sahaba who didn't have much that they could offer, but wanted to offer something. Like, I want to be a part of this good, I want to serve the deen of Allah, because it's a part of what's important for me. And even with all of the ch financial challenges they had, the fact that they didn't have much to give, the fact that they were being mocked, the fact that they were being put down, none of that stopped them from coming. And Allah recognized it from on high, that these people, I see them. I, like he made sure, Allah said, I'm making sure that they know. I see them, I see their sincerity, I see the tears coming from their eyes, and they're rewarded for it just because they tried. And, and hopefully we all can develop that spirit in us, where no matter what our circumstances, no matter what the circumstances around the community, we're going to do our best to give because it's, it's what we need. Um, uh, I want to leave it uh, off to Sheikh Hussam if he has a final comment that he didn't get to say yet uh, before we officially close. I just have one quick thing. And then Sheikh Hassan, inshallah. And I'll just say it quickly and then we're going to yeah. close with Sheikh Hussam because he's the misk. Mm. 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 He's the misk. misk. <laughs> the misk. I'm Samak. I'm the misk. I'm the misk. I was just going to say that I also just want to indicate something that this project of being committed to the Muslim community is it's a theological one. It's a spiritual one. It's a communal one. It's also a lifelong reality. What I mean by that is some of us, perhaps let's say we're inspired to show up and come and try to figure it out. Um, you have to develop a type of resilience mm. that realizes that you are not the solution, but you have to be present so that perhaps Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will use you for khair. Mm. And, and it may be that you're there for 50 years and you saw minimal change, but you were present trying to do the best of your ability, removing your ego and your nafs with humility, just being present and serving because you don't want to come and then after a year or two say like, what's the point? You know, I tried to get involved. It was a complete mess. It's a disaster. And then, and then you live the next many years of your life you know, lamenting how disaster the Muslim community was because at one point you had an experience <laughs> where you got involved. Yeah. And because we have this now, by the way. Yeah, I remember I got involved in the 90s. I'll tell you the Masajid are a disaster. And it seems like it's the same disaster. That's why I don't even go to Masajid anymore. That's a very dangerous place to be in in life, right? This, this is, you know, من المهدي إلى اللحت. This is from the cradle till the grave. You come to the space, you serve the house of Allah, if Allah chooses that he through you brings goodness alhamdulillah if you don't see exponential changes Allah Sayyidina Nuh did not see exponential changes in his journey of da'wah so don't make it about that you, once you come in that you're going to make the change there's a lot of people who actually get quickly burnt out because they come in with a, a, a lot of hamasa a lot of kind of high inspiration and motivation and then 
burnout hits, they hit a few roads and they're like, um, this is not even worth it. And they walk away. So I just wanted to indicate that. Inshallah. <laughs> And I really think that um, I really like this discussion with you guys. Uh, you know, I think, uh, you know, as, as we were closing up, it brought so many more questions to my mind about where to take this, you know, like, uh, um, you know, like on one end, when you look at it and you try to like understand the grievances of people uh, with the masjid space, uh, you know, and the blessings of like, uh, and the impact, you know, I thought about, I reflected on this, uh, the impact of, you know, critical positions and how they might affect generations, um, mm -hmm. how having someone like the Prophet وسلم, in his position for the companions, even though the dynamic of community was like so intricate, even during his time, um, you know, uh, you know, played a big role in, you know, helping the general body navigate different difficult situations, how actually having someone in that position who isn't able to do that could be actually very devastating for communities. Um, and that, that's that's one point of reflection I had. And that's why the Prophet, he actually said this, uh, you know, to Abu Dhar. Abu Dhar, he said to him, Abu Dhar in the Amana, it is a trust. Um, and on the day of judgment, it will be a source of khizi and disgrace and regret. Disgrace, it will be a source of disgrace and regret, except for someone who gives it its right. So at one point of reflection, like how can we begin to discuss the vulnerability uh, of our masajid mm -hmm. to being like uh, sort of uh, derailed by mm -hmm. um, people who make it into critical positions of power uh, that might dishearten a large body of people who um, already find it difficult to invest themselves in relationships and community in physical spaces. I, you know, but on the other end, you know, the other questions that brought to mind is like, right, like what type of lifestyle, lifestyle choices am I making for myself? Um, you know, and that's where it brings it back home, a discussion to every single one of us. You know, we, you know, we should be asking ourselves that, you know, on every level, you know, in terms of uh, what we put in our bodies, in terms of how we spend our free time, in terms of uh, how we engage with others, in terms of how we build our families, what type of lifestyle choices am I making and how does that can affect me and those around me, my children? You know, that's, that's one of the big questions that, you know, everyone should walk away with uh, from here because uh, based on how we deal with this one issue, um, you know, it might have such a far reaching effect on our sense of Iman, our sense of faith, and you know what? Our children and the generations after that, you know, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us. Barakallahu feekum, Mawlana. And just, I mean, I, 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 I did say you were the misc, okay? <laughs> I'm just here to, like, take that misc and spread it far and wide. Yes, That's all I'm doing. I'm just, I'm just, I'm just, I'm going to take your misc and spread it far and wide. The only thing that I want to, Sheikh Hussam mentioned that inspired me is to say the following, which is, you know, don't belittle the smallest um, good deed. Some of us may be listening and say like, you know, yeah, I think these guys are talking about, you know, other people, but not me because I'm, uh, I don't really have much to offer. I'm just a simple person, blah, 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 all that kind of stuff. No, everyone has something to offer. Everyone's presence. There is baraka. Uh, you know, there is barakah in the numbers and the people who show up and come and are present. Um, you know, uh, our salawat, if our salat had numbers, if Salat al-Fajr and Salat al-Isha and our prayers had numbers in it, um, that would mean something very different than having five, 10 people, 20 people, 30 people show up. Mm -hmm. um, it just, by, why, why, by meaning, it means something different, meaning that its impact on us socially and communally and spiritually uh, on the space is exponentially better. So showing up and being present and making yourself known and identified and introducing yourself to Sheikh Usama and saying, Salaamu Alaikum, I'm here. Introducing yourself to Sheikh Qatanani, um, anything that I can do, I don't know what I can do, but if you need volunteers, if you need someone to help pick up, clean up, drop off, um, you know, if, you, if there's things that need to be purchased on behalf of the masjid, maybe I can help. Uh, any small thing that your presence will make a huge difference in the landscape of the Muslim community, you know, and, and don't ever um, forget that. And, and, and if, if you, if we all have a sincere, sincere intention 
that Allah uses us for his cause and we come in with profound humility, then Allah will use us. In Allah, Allah will choose us for his cause, not as Sayyidina Umar ibn Abdul Aziz. I'm just talking about a simple you know, soldier or servant in the space of the divine project. And that's what we pray can pray that Allah you know, facilitates through us by his permission and his grace. Amen. 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 May Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam accept this time that we spent together, um, the three of us and everyone who listens to it, inshallah. Um, uh, I hope people listen to this on different platforms. Alhamdulillah, we're now available on just about every podcasting platform. Please do your best if you found benefit to share it with your friends and family. Um, and as always, please send in your comments um, through any of our many pages, whether it be Facebook, YouTube, um, or any of the podcasting pages. You can send in your comments there. Uh, you can also um text the 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 public number that we've given out in all of our amas i'll have it ready next time as well uh, to read it out um but you know please stay engaged with us and inshallah we'll have another episode um uh, every month uh, uh for the time being um jazakumullah khair wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh